Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Lightweight Ministries. So glad that you're back with us for those of you who are revisiting and uh, for those of you who are new, Shalom, welcome. Um, as I already said, we're Lightweight Ministries and uh, I'm just going to get right into what we do, how we do it, and of course why we do it. Um, we are here at 3443. Look at that, I love that. See, that's called dramatic pause. When you dramatically pause, you get people's attention. And sometimes when you whisper, so I got somebody's attention. But anyway, we're at 3443 Chapman in the city of Orange, California, at a place called Platinum Strands. It is a hair salon. Um, if anybody would love to come and join us at four o'clock every Sabbath, please do. We would love to have you here where we could grow and learn together um, in truth and in righteousness. We know that our Father is seeking those who are what? Will worship Him in those very things, in truth and in righteousness. Um, we are... Uh, leading the way of truth in these end times he's commissioned us to do such things and so um we are not serenes we are not uh christians i'll talk to, about that later on as we go through uh the sermon today uh, brother garrett will not be preaching um today um i'll be preaching the whole time uh, because we we're going to continue with uh what happened from uh two two three weeks ago two weeks ago now uh we're going to still continue with the um uh virgins the five wise and the five foolish so before I continue more than that, I want to say hi to our sister congregation, our Mishra out in the continent of India, the Pakistan side, and the India side, and the Pakistan side is Brother Tamar, who's out there with uh, our, our brothers and sisters and fighting the good fight, and we just had a major victory over there, um, which is very humbling in that uh, nation. Um, and I don't, I'll, I'll wait till I get some of the documentations before I get fully into that, but I will give you this. Um, they were uh, under some extreme persecution brought on by the Christians actually um, calling them Jews and um, and they're not Jews we are Israel but we're not Jews and for those of you that understand the difference I'm not going to go into all that but please message email um, Facebook YouTube us whatever you have to do if you want a little bit more explanation of the difference between Yisrael and Jews of today and why I made that statement and we were proving to this um, Islamic government which is a new regime that's been in place for the last three to four months now who we were and what we were about so we had the privilege um, to go before kings and amongst all uh, the religious elements that were there which i didn't i was unaware of till this last week and they rendered a judgment that out of the catholics out of the christians and any other denominations that are out there uh, who follow the scriptures we are the only ones that are following correctly this was their judgment and that we are to be left alone over there in Pakistan and that if anybody bothers them, they're going to be in trouble by the government. They totally uh, respect us and our belief system now as not Serenes. And uh, it's amazing. It was very humbling. And so, Brother Tamar, what an awesome victory for the kingdom of Yah. Um, we're, we're doing it. He's doing it out there. And we have Brother uh, uh, Pastor P over on the India side who is doing such an amazing work. I mean taking care of the homeless, the, the hungry, the widows, the orphans, the fatherless, um, you know, uh, providing blankets uh, for, um, for the uh, uh, leopards and anybody else who needs it. Um, you know, we have a building that uh, we help them purchase. Um, one side is for the widows, the other side is for the um, orphans. And uh, we also are able to help them. And they, they teach how to sew and they're getting new sewing machines almost weekly now. Um, I saw some more that uh, came uh, 
through Pastor P to the women and teaching them how to be self-sustaining in a society where it was much like Old Testament time or the Tanakh time where a woman couldn't really sustain her own self. She had to have a husband or, or her father or something like that. Well, instead of just feeding a fish, we know we know the old idiom that we have here. You know, you feed a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Well, he's teaching them how to sew and create garments and to take to the marketplace so that so that they are able to sustain themselves and um, also do uh, give that as a witness so it's really amazing it's awesome and thank you so much pastor p and your family for being so tireless and and putting so much of a great effort in spreading the kingdom over in India. And they're also having great persecution with the Hindus out there too, who set out a mandate, uh, I believe last year, that in 20, what was it, Garrett, 2022 or 21? 21. 21. In 2021, they I were- I have it actually on my phone. Ah, excellent. And in 2021, they were a wipe out everybody who believes in scripture, believe in Yahusha HaMashiach, uh, who, who who worship Yahusha so or Yahuwah. So um, so far that is not happening. I told them don't be wor don't worry about that. We prayed over that. And even if there was extreme persecution, what they don't realize is that in extreme persecution, what happens? The bizarre the gospel gets spread out even more. So that's really awesome. Also, what we do is we don't do um, um, praise and thanksgiving in the beginning of our services. We do it after um, because we are in a business. And uh, when we like to praise, boy, we get a little loud and it was disrupting business. So uh, with much prayer and, and guidance from the Ruah um, at the end of service, it's just a little bit different. We are doing it at the end. And it's amazing though, to have that ending that way, going out on a high note, if you will. You know, it's like telling the chef, thank you for an amazing meal. And we get to tell the king, we, we appreciate what you've done for us at the end. It, it's really awesome. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna pray um, over the service, pray over the offering. Uh, the free gift, uh, free will offering. We cannot tie tithes with the temple. We cannot do that. It's impossible. You need the biblical priest to do that. Um, so it's not a tithe. We do a free will offering. As of your free will, you will give what the Ruach inspired you to do to keep this ministry going so that we can continue to fund the work of the kingdom. It does take money. You know, being here takes money. Uh, this room costs uh, rent. We have equipment that costs things. Um, you know, uh, we've you know, giving out Bibles and things like that to those who uh, couldn't afford it. We've done that for those who could. They've given a donation. So, you know, these things take money. And yes, it's been abused before. I get it. I totally understand that. Um, but the kingdom does run on money. Israel ran on money. <laughs> This is how it works. So let's not get too caught up on the negative side of it. Be wise. Be discerning. And just follow what the Ruach tells you to do. That's where it comes down to. So we're going to pray over that. And then we're going to get into the meat of the service. Um, we're going to dive right into that. Again, I talked about the, the ten uh, virgins, the five wise and the five unwise or foolish, the five obedient and the five um, disobedient ones. Thank you. And uh, we're going to go back and do a little review. And then we're going to dive a little further into who's who. Um, and that you can actually set yourself up to be one or the other. I thought the five unwise or disobedient didn't get in, but they were in the group. They do have a place. It's just not with the other five. And we're going to find that out. We're going to look through scripture. So these are things a lot that's not out there a lot um, that are right there in scripture. A little lack of understanding. There are people who will be least in the kingdom of heaven. You know, we have, we have Manyahu where Yahusha said that anybody who does not do the commandment and teaches others not to, or breaks the least of these and teaches others not to, will be least in heaven. Wait a minute, least? That means they're still there. So there's something there that we're not quite understanding. It's not quite as black and white as we thought. Well, it is black and white, it's just a different black and white <laughs> than what we thought. We thought it was in and out, that's it. Well, no, Father is a little different. He's like, okay, you you try, you didn't fully do it, so you get to be here in the kingdom. And those who really put their heart into it and really push forward, they get to be here in the kingdom. Which makes sense. Look at the earth. What happens here? Those who really go at it and try hard at life, in business, whatever it is, at their marriages, with their kids, with education, whatever it is. The ones that really try hard, they get the most success. The ones who don't, don't. It just kind of makes sense if you really look at it. 
So, and this is a shadow of the things that are there. So, we'll get more into that. Um, but before we do that, Brother Gary's going to come up and read Tehillim's 92. Before you, after you pray? You this will be before. Okay. Yeah, we do before. Uh, he's not used to doing it, uh, usually Sister Jeanette does. But right now, she is um, she's uh, taking care of the technical aspects of our ministry. And so that we can get Brother Gary, who's so tirelessly and, and willfully uh, sacrifices a lot to do it. Um, and so we're kind of going to spread it out so that he can spend some time with family and take some time off when appropriate um, to do family things, uh, which he has sacrificed a lot of that, uh, which we really appreciate. And then Sister Jeanette just lovingly said, yes, she would do it so he could also do that. So thank both of you guys for loving each other. And you know what they say about that? No. Or they say, what did our Savior say about that? That's it. By you will truth. know my people by the love you show one another. So you guys are showing love to one another. That's a beautiful thing. Let's continue to do that. Without further ado, I don't have to stand up here with him, Brother Gary. <laughs> oh, I got it. Now it makes sense. I can't believe I did you not know. understand that. I would, uh, okay. You are a man. I know. I do know. I, yeah, okay. I can't believe it took me that long to understand. It took me a week. The Psalms 92. It is good. It is good. It is good. To give thanks to Yahuwah. It is. Nope, I'm not going to go there. And to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your love and commitment in the morning and your trustworthiness each night. On the ten strings and on the harp, to the sounding chords of the lyre. For you have made me rejoice with your works, O Yahuwah. I shout for joy at the works of your hands, O Yahuwah. How great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know and the fool does not understand this. When the wrong spring up like grass, and the workers of wickedness blossom, it is for them to be destroyed forever. But you, Yahuwah, are on high forever. For look, your enemies, O Yahuwah, for look, your enemies do perish, and all the workers of wickedness are scattered. But you lift up my horn like a wild ox, and, you, and I have been anointed with fresh oil. And my eyes look upon my enemies, my ears hear the evildoers who rise up against me. The righteous one flourishes like a palm tree. He grows in the cedar, and it goes like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of Yahuwah flourish in the courts of our Elohim. They bear fruit in old age. They are fresh and green to declare that Yahuwah is straight, a rock, and in him is no unrighteousness. There's a lot in that. I forget where I wanted to... No, I don't remember. Oh! Slightly. Sorry, Derek. Mm -hmm. How often do you cut the grass? How, well, how often you should cut the grass? Mow the lawn. That are the evildoers who come up against you. And no matter how many times you chop them down, you get rid of them, as long as you're in this world, the evildoers are going to constantly rise up and rise up and rise up and rise up. You just got to keep on chopping and chopping and chopping and chopping. As it says, when, when this wrong spring up like grass, they're going to constantly spring up. Crabgrass is an interesting grass. It's, I hate it. <laughs> it was a pain in the butt. Because it digs roots deep. And all the work of wickedness blossom. You got all these weeds and going everywhere and whatnot. But it is for them to be destroyed forever. Yahuwah is your weed killer. You have this garden that you have to tend to. Your body is like the temple, but also your mind and your heart is the garden you have to constantly tend to. If you keep on sinning, these workers of wickedness keep on blossoming and growing and getting taller inside your nefesh, inside your being. If the Spirit is living your life, if you're allowing Him to move through you and work in you, 
as it says here, is for them to be destroyed forever. It will cast out that sin. Stop remembering the things that you do. We all make mistakes. What does Yahuwah say in Isaiah? As far as the east is to the west, I do not remember your sin. Well, he's forgotten it. Stop, for remem stop remembering it. Keep on striving. Keep on working for the righteousness of Yahuwah. So he can declare you right in the end. Derek? The teacher always has to teach. They can't help it. <laughs> they just can't help it. See, he ain't he, I said he wasn't supposed to teach today, right? But little happened. Can't help it. It comes with that. So, the one thing I want to say about it briefly is uh, what caught me was to praise him in the morning and to praise him, praise him each night. See, this is the first thing that he should be our first thought and he should be our last. Everything in between. He is what? The olive and the towel. He is the beginning and the end. The first and the last. That should that should be the first. We shouldn't wake up when I'm hungry. I, I wake up, I would say at least 97, 98% of the time, and I go, I'm alive. Thank you, Father. That's the first thing I recognize. Oh, I'm actually alive. Thank you, Father. Because I know life isn't promised to me. And he said yes to me once again. The only reason why I'm standing here today because he said yes to me. He could have said, no, not today. That is, is what I plan for you is done. So I'm very grateful for that. And then at night, he's planned this whole day for me. So then at night, I go, thank you for everything that's happened today. Everything. When I mean everything, I mean everything. I don't care what kind of day you've had. You were alive to experience it. And their lessons. And sometimes lessons are hard. Sometimes you're going to go meet difficult people and they're going to test you. But didn't Father say he would test his people? Didn't Moshe tell Yazriel, don't worry, he brought you out here into this wilderness to test you? Don't worry, he brought you out here into this wilderness to test you. <laughs> Isn't that interesting terminology? Because a lot of us don't want to be tested. We don't, we don't want all that. But no, the only way to get what excellence out of anybody, what? Is to put them through trials, tri tribulations, tests. They know where they are. They know where they're not. The trials and tribulation helps get them going and moving. And as we learned last week, what's trials and tribulations do to us as the bride? That is the, what? Where do we get the oil in our lamps? From the olives. And we got to get that, what? Trials and tribulation to press us and press us and press us so that we have oil for our lamps to have the light. So we should learn to be a people as our brother Jacob, or they wrongfully called James says in chapter 1. Count on joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing is a thing you have to know. It's producing good fruit within you. So, okay. So, um, we're going to pray now over the service. We're going to pray over the prayer cards. I, I, I think I didn't mention that earlier. Father had us about, uh, I think in March or so, or March, April. I'm um, sorry. Okay, so it was in February. Yeah, no, I don't think it was January. I don't think it was January, but um, spoke about doing prayer cards and because I asked, what are we actually doing here in the salon? Why are we here? And it's to service this community and those who come within here. And some beautiful things have happened. There's been healings take place. Uh, one was recorded. Somebody bust in the door during a service and just had to express the healing that she that took place with her hip. Um, and that's recorded. You can see that on YouTube. I don't know which uh, which one it is, but it's there. So these are things I'm making up. Um, and so we have these prayer cards, and we pray over them for Yahuwah to, you know, um, answer them to give Himself glory, and so they can go. Okay, there is an Elohim that is paying attention to me, and hopefully that will lure them to Himself. I want to know more about Him, and we're here to do that um, once that happens. So if you'll join me in prayer, Avinu Makenu. Our Father, our King, we just glorify you. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise because you are worthy. Thank you for opening the door, the door that is Yahusha. Um, even constructing that door for us to be able to get through that you desired that as a master craftsman so that we can come before your throne of grace and mercy. Thank you for having us cleaned up so that we can even do that. Giving us uh, uh, the righteousness of Yahusha. 
for that's the only way we can stand before you in in our current state of being so we glorify you thank you father father we ask that um, you be here at the service, that you be here at the salon, that we bind the enemy, um, that your words of truth would be so deeply implanted and will grow. Um, those trees that have already grown from this particular seed, that there will be more water, that there will be more fertilization, or even a pruning so that more fruit can be produced, Father. We just say, have your way. You know what needs to happen, Father. You know what needs to happen. We're here to submit to your ways. So we, we turn this time right back over to you right now and just we're vessels just to be used by you. Father, we ask that according to your word that you would bless those who were able to give today uh, from a cheerful and willing heart to you in, in obedience and, and wanting to help further your kingdom and uh, the needs uh, around the world at this point as you have allowed us to do such things. Um, thank you. That really humbles us that we're able to be a part of that, that you saw us even worthy to do such things. So, um just bless them the way your word says that you would open up a storehouse or excuse me you open up open heaven and fill their storehouses with so much that um, they're not going to be able to receive it all but we know those of us who are more mature in the faith we understand that these blessings aren't just for us that we're blessed to be a blessing we are of the seed of abraham through yahushua and that these blessings are for the nations and and for our, our mishpah our family and that we're not to hold on to these things um even the people in the world know this i, I you know, I've heard worldly people say, those who aren't in the family, the Gentiles, the uncovenant, say, you know, you can't take money with you. What can you do with it, really? Um, you know, you just acquire more things and more things and more things. Uh, and, and they even recognize to give and to help people with it is really the goal. And so, uh, Father, you've taught us that. So continue to ha have that be uh, uh, so deep within our hearts to love our neighbors as ourselves that we would be so generous like you. You get six days of giving you gave us and then you gave us a day of rest that we would do that. But ultimately you gave us your son and, and the sacrificing of his life so that we could have all these tremendous inheritance rights, these blessings uh, and be reconnected to you father and, and represent you the way we're supposed to because we're created in your likeness and in your image again we just glorify you father um, we ask that you would uh, uh, the prayer cards that you would answer every last one in the way that you see fit as I was speaking to a, another person earlier sometimes we pray miss as your word says we don't know how to pray or we think we see the situation so we try to tell you what to do father we right now say do what you know is right in the way that you need to do it father we just ask that you answer them again to allure them to yourself for those who don't know you uh, to strengthen faith and give more testimony that there is uh, elohim who's alive and well and he cares about all our needs every day every second every minute every hour of that day we love you. We glorify you. We're not ashamed to call your name Yahuwah because you said in the end times your name will be revealed to the nations. And that they will one day, all nations, tribe, tongue, and, and, and creeds and language will all bow before you. And we look forward to that day that Yahusha returns and takes us home. Either the first time or the second time. We'll learn that later. Yahusha is my name. We pray. Hallelujah. Okay, something. Well, after prayer, things appear. Just yes. Okay. Alrighty. So we're gonna see if this works. We had a little some technical difficulty last time, and let's see if we uh have taken care of that. A lot of times, what I start off with is. You know, who are we? Who is Line Way Ministries? I gave a little bit in the beginning. Um, we're not Christians. That's a different group. And um, there, there, there's two sides to the Christian side. There's the ones that were before Yahushua even was here in the flesh. And then there is the universal church that appeared who called themselves, in, Catholic means universal. Universal religion, which are also Christians. There was a fusion of uh, scriptural belief. The original Christians did not believe um, in scripture. Um, they were they were worshiping Mithra, and uh, the Roman Catholic, the Roman government under Constantine brought it all together um, and combined the two. We know that when you bring salt water 
and fresh water together, what happens? Do you have fresh water anymore? You have salt water. You cannot mix the holy with the profane, the clean with the unclean. Whatever is unclean will take over the clean. Whatever is profane will take over what is holy. So now there's this thing called Christianity that has become unholy and pagan. And it's not the belief system of our brother Saul, Paul. It's not the belief system he taught at, in Corinthians. Actually, he was teaching against it. And so forth and so on. He called himself and asked, let me not get ahead of myself. We'll go ahead <laughs> and, and, and do that. We're, we're, we're 21st century. century believers. We're first century believers, excuse me, in the 21st century. So what does that mean? We only go by what the apostles taught. Who got taught by Yahusha. And what they were taught were many things. The very things Brother Saul taught also. I read many scriptures. And about two weeks from now. I'm going to be going over some things Brother Saul said. And it's going to have to be dealing with, with Halloween. Because it's going to be about shoot we as Nazarenes. I'm not going to talk about the Christians. Because they yeah they do practice that. That is their, that's their belief system. To practice that. But as Nazarenes that is not ours. No, And most Nazarenes are very much aware of that. They know they're not supposed to be doing that, but we're going to hone that in. And Father illuminated me or, or revealed to me um, many scriptures that I've never, I've read them, but I didn't catch it the way I caught it. Brother Saul saying, obey the commandments, obey the commandments. Many other places. In Timothy, he said it. First Timothy, to the Corinthians, he said it. He was saying it to who they call Gentiles. Obey the commandments. What commandments? He didn't say the commandments of Yahushua as the church would have you believe. He said the commandments, they were all that world back then when you said commandments or you said the way, they all understood what that meant. That meant the Torah. That's the only commandments there were. That's the only commandments they taught. That's all that's needed. We're going to get to, but Derek, that's the Old Testament. Okay, no problem. I'm going to read the Old Testament verse that talks about the whole world. Even at that time. Some people say, well, that's for them Jews. Well, no, it wasn't. We're going to read about what the wisest man on earth said about that. There's too many verses that are very conclusive. And these other doctrines, these fables, these myths that the scriptures warned us about, that would come up. It's not just coming up. Now it's been. A lot of things we've been waiting for. No, they've already been here. So we're going to look at that. So first one I'm going to do, why do we call ourselves not serenes? Well, let's read Yohanan chapter 15, 1 through, uh, 1 through 2, and I'm going to 5 through 8. You cheat on your son. Yes, son. There we go. Okay. It's just going to take longer okay. because of it. Okay. This is Yahushua speaking. He's going to talk about who he is and who his followers are. I am the great I am. I am the vine. And my father is the gardener. Every branch, that word in Hebrew is not serene. It, in me, that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch, not serene, that bears fruit, he prunes. So that bears more fruit. So not serene, get ready to be pruned. That's a cutting. Ouch. Snip, snip, snip. You may see yourself, oh, I got all these blessings. All of a sudden, you're back down to just what you need. What happened? Because Father is getting ready to what? He's going to barack you with some more stuff. He's going to bless you with more. You're going to produce more fruit. I am the vine. You are the branches, not serene. He who stays in me, I am in him. He bears me much fruit because without me, you are, you are able to do not or nothing. If another does not stay in me, if anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch, a not serene, and dries up. Does this sound familiar? Hazan, what do you say? I really have you hot or cold. Now, I heard somebody say as I was in my house and talking about the hot and cold thing, they gave the normal Christian answer. He read it for you to be cold, not with him. That's not what he's saying. Hot and cold back then were both useful uh, uh, um, states of water. That would not get you sick. Lukewarm water back then full and festering with bacteria and viruses would get you sick and make you throw up. That's what he was saying. Cold is useful. Hot is useful. 
Whoever you are, be hot or cold. Just don't be lukewarm. You'll make me sick and I'll have to vomit you out. That's what he was saying. This is the same language here, is it not? And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you stay in me, if you do, and my word stays in you, you shall ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. In this my Father is esteemed or glorified that you bear much fruit and you shall be my taught ones. Okay. So we're going to go with some what? History. We're going to see what some other people outside of scripture said about Nazarenes, Christians, and Judaism. Um, Epiphanius is speaking here. He is a Catholic church father. He is not the father of the true belief system of scripture. This is the Catholic church fathers. A lot of Christians will say, oh, the Catholic church fathers, uh, the church fathers, they're going to run underneath the Catholic church again. Are they supposed to be Protestants? I thought they stepped out of that. They don't realize they're still there. The, the, the Reformation didn't really fully take hold. But let's read what Epiphanius says. The 4th century church father Epiphanius gives a detailed description of this. But these sectarians did not all call themselves Christians. But not Serenes. Well, he says Nazarenes is really not Serenes. However, they are certainly complete Jews. They use not only the New Testament, but the Old Testament as well as the Jews do. They have no different idea, but confess everything exactly as the law proclaims it and in a Jewish fashion, except for their belief in Messiah, if you please. There's some sarcasm here. You can see he doesn't like them. For they acknowledge both the resurrection of the dead and the divine creation of all things and declare that Elohim is one and that his son is Yahushua the Mashiach. I put those in there. He didn't say those words exactly. He didn't say Elohim. He used the common word, the Tectonian uh, uh, proper name for God who is a deity. And they use that uh, word that's been more recently used for uh, the Savior, which is, has nothing to do with him. Uh, and you guys know which one that is. Garrett, would you mind giving me some water, please? Yeah. Thank you. They are trained in the in trained to the nicety in Hebrew, for among them the entire law of the prophets and the writings are read in Hebrew, as they surely are by the Jews. They are different from the Jews and different from the Christians, only in the following. They disagree with Jews because they have come to the faith in Mashiach, but since they are still fettered with the law, circumcision, Sabbath, and the rest, they are not in accordance with Christians. They are nothing but Jews. They have the good news according to Matthew in the entirety in Hebrew. Isn't that funny? I just I saw about two months ago a professor, a very well-known scholar. I forget exactly his name. I watched a four-hour thing, and he didn't know that Matthew, is, there's a, there, there is a uh, scrolls of Matthew written completely in Hebrew. They're in the London Museum right now. He said that all the gospel was written in Greek. And they're finding more Hebrew documentation that the gospels, the Bazaar, was written in Hebrew. It only makes sense if you really think about it and if you really understand who the Gentiles were, that they weren't non-Hebrew people. But anyway, we'll continue. For it's clear that they still preserve this in entirety in Hebrew and uh, as it was originally written. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Then we have uh, Brother Paul in Acts, uh, verse 20, chapter 24, 1 through 5. And you got the Sanhedrin snatches him up. We got uh, the priest Hananiah is uh, leading the pack and taking him before the governmental authorities of Rome. They're taking the governor Felix. They let Brother Tortilius, Tortilius, the speaker, speak on their behalf. And that's where we're starting. They're accusing Paul of certain things. But let's see what they say about him. And after five days, the high priest Hananiah came down with the elders and a certain speaker, Tortilius. And they brought charges against Saul before the governor. And when he was called upon, Tortilius began to accuse him, saying, Having attained great peace through you and reform being brought to this nation by your forethought, we accept it always in all places, most excellent Felix, with all thanks. But in order not to hinder you any further, I beg you to hear us briefly in your gentleness. 
for having found this man a plague who stirs up dissension among the Yehudim throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. It's funny he didn't say Christian. Hmm. Hmm. Acts 24, 10, verse 10, and then 14 through 16, Brother Saul gets to tell his part, a little bit of it. And when the governor had motioned, to, uh, motioned him to speak, Saul answered, Knowing that for many years you have been a judge of this nation, I gladly defend myself, and in this I confess to you that according to the way which you call a sect, See, the Nazarenes were showing people the way. And they knew that the way was talking about Torah. So I worship the Elohim of my fathers, believing all that has been written in the Torah and in the prophets, having an expectation in Elohim, which they themselves also wait for, that there is to be a resurrection of the dead, both of the righteous and the unrighteous. And we're going to talk about that a little bit when we get to the five wise versions and the five unwise and in this I exercise myself to have a clear conscience towards Elohim and men always so he he said that he was of this sect that they call what the way he didn't say he was of the sect called Christianity he wasn't called a Christian by Tertullius and uh, next time I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up next time what Governor Felix said, he said, you almost convinced me to be a Christianos. What was he saying? We, if we understand what the word means and where it comes from, it means you almost convinced me to become an idiot, a fool, a retarded person. That's what it's saying. Brother Peter Kepha also said the thing there. We suffer as Christianos, as a Christian, as a retarded person, they're treating us as such. See, they were called that. That was a mocking term against those Nazarenes who are following this Messiah. They're a bunch of idiots. They're a bunch of retarded people for this. So we'll get into that later. But right now, we're going to we're going to get into the rest, the second installment of the uh, uh, parable of the five or the ten virgins, five wise, obedient, and five disobedient, unwise. And it has to do with the last days. And if we really are paying attention to where we are in the history of scripture and prophecy, which is the only calendar there is, please understand that. That's the only one you should really be aware of. The rest of it doesn't mean anything. If you miss the understanding of these calendars and events and what's going on, your eternal life is at stake. You're going to miss out on some stuff. It can mean death for you or somewhere you didn't actually want to be as far as, and we'll see here what I'm talking about about that as far as ranking. See, I don't talk about this a lot. There's, there's ranking in scripture. I'm going to bring up Yohanan. What did Yahushua say about Yohanan? He's the greatest prophet ever, but he's least in heaven. That's ranking. That blows my mind, actually. I don't fully understand that, but I know scripture says the first will be last and the last will be first. So he's glorified now, but later on somebody else is going to have this. The Father is about balancing the scales. He gives everybody an opportunity. So we have to understand about, about Scripture. The, we have been indoctrinated by the circus not to understand these things. The church, not to understand. They focus on some other stuff all the time. They're not telling us the full story, but they're not designed to. we got to understand that. You know, I, I, I'm, uh, I am. Okay. We have to, I'm going to speak to all my fellow Nazarenes out there and, and, and the leaders in it. We have to stop apologizing to the Christians. We need to stop bowing down and backing up from the Christians. They are designed by their inception to mislead. I'm not saying be mean, cruel, or anything like that. But there's many of us that I've watched at the same time ministries who got the same revelation i did at the same time and they're backing up and they're backing up and, and and they're submitting to christianity and we need to be bold underneath persecute they don't have to like us they never did and they never will but there are those who are in there like we were and we're here to lead them out of babylon why are we being so uh, 
weak about that? Why are we apologetic about that? We're the leaders. So I'm speaking to all those who are leaders. And when I mean leaders, I'm talking really broad. That's all of us. We're all leaders at different levels. So I'm talking to all of us. Let us not be sheep. In love, let us proclaim the truth. And recognize we may get hit. And let's turn the other cheek. This is what we're made to do. This is what we're built for. This is our design. So let's do that in love. Okay? Let's not back up. Let's tell the truth because people are going to die. People are going to die. Or people are going to be placed somewhere. And they're going to say, wait a minute. How come they didn't tell me this? So be ready for the last days and help others to get ready. Song of, a song of Psalms. Chapter 6, verse 3. We're going to do the A part. I am, I am my beloved's. And my beloved is mine. The bride is especially attracted to the bridegroom, Yahusha, and she knows she belongs to him as a treasured possession, as a Nazarene. She knows this. She understands the bride. When a woman is engaged to a man, betrothed, is there any question? Does she walk around with that ring on her finger as we do it? And, you know, we've discussed that that's really a pagan practice. But in our society right now, they put rings on their fingers. So I'm going to speak that way for right now. But they put when they get that, and that man proposes in front of everybody, took pictures and camera, you know, fam, this side of the family's here, this side of the family's here, co-workers and the like. You think she's questioning if she's engaged? She goes around, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. you know, her hand just flying around. Flapping so bad, she starts to lift off. She don't have no question. So then I say to my Nazarenes, do you have a question of who you betrothed to? Are you as that excited? Are you going around showing everybody? Are you telling them and excited that there's a wedding day coming and you want them to be a part of it? Matter of fact, you could be in it. You could be part of the bride right with me. Now, as a bride, you know, maid of honor or anything like that, but you can be getting married too. I know it sounds a little weird, but this is a little different situation, spiritually speaking. So this is what we should be doing. We should be so excited as a earthly bride is. This is way better than any earthly wedding you could ever have. The reward of it is better than anything you can imagine. The beauty and splendor of what we will see, you can't imagine. You can't even fathom what we're going to see and what it's going to be like. But we kind of go through our day and we're kind of. <laughs> but that's not how a bride acts. So that would be the other question Are you really a bride? Because a bride don't act that way. A bride doesn't act that way. So we'll see. Time for a review because it's been a little bit. And you know we've had the we had the fall feast come in, and ooh, what a great time! And Father has really, in our congregation in particular, he's done some amazing things. A lot of people seem to be reconnected. Everybody who did Sukkot seem to be reconnected in a spiritual way. I've been dreaming like crazy ever since. There's been revelations coming out from various people in the congregation, really deep revelation. Um, there's been um, some things overcame and are being overcome. That revelation of recognizing it. So something happened this last Sukkot. Or this last fall season in particular. And so we, we've been through all that. But right now, so we may have lost a little bit of what was taught. But I'm going to bring you back. So we're all on the same line. Refresh your memory. So let's get going. We're going to get into the parable. Alright, so let's go to Mount Yahoo 25, 1 through 5. And we're going to talk about what? The, the ten virgins. But pay attention. The ten virgins are what? A representation of what? The reign of Hashemayim, the heavens. So, so let's read. Then the reign of the heavens shall be compared to. So if you want to know what heaven is like, here we go. It's going to be compared to this. Ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five foolish. Those who were foolish having taken their lamps, took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their containers with their lamps. Now, while the bridegroom took time 
they all slumbered and slept. And we're going to go through six through nine. And at midnight, a cry, a cry was heard. We can say a tarua, a trumpet, a shout. See, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet him. Then all those bands rose up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise answer is saying, no, indeed, these, there would not be enough for us. And you, <laughs> that's not in there, but I'm sure it's kind of what happened. Are you kidding me? Instead, go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. We can't ride a lot on other people's relationship with the Ruach. Some people like to do that. They write, you pray because I know Father listens to you. You have a closer relationship. You, yeah, you have a close. Well, why would think about what somebody <laughs> says when they say that you got a close relationship to the Creator, and I need His help right now, so I got to find you to pray for on my on my behalf. Why don't you want that relationship for yourself? You know why they don't want it? Because it takes a lot of sacrifice. They got to have oil in their lamps. We're gonna find what that oil is. They don't want to do that. They want you to do it, so they can come and try to take your oil. Sometimes you gotta say no. Nah, -uh, nah. Certain things you can't share. You cannot share your relationship in that sense. Your relationship with Father, that's yours. It's intimate. They got to get their own. You can guide them to Him. And say, you can have this too. But you can't have mine. See, in a marriage situation, can, 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 can a wife's girlfriend have some of that relationship with her, with, with, with her husband? See, no, 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 sweetheart, get your own husband, you know, no. Well, can I hug him and kiss him too? And Oh, uh, no, 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 you can't. No, no, he ain't going to do all that. You know, I can't, I can't go to my friend who's married and go, oh, can I hug your wife and kiss her like you do? Man, you better get up out of here. Fighting words. You want to see how hard I can punch you? Right? See, that, that, see, that doesn't make sense. But see, people do that spiritually. And it doesn't make sense. It's unacceptable as well. As well. 10 to 13. And while they went to buy these unwise virgins, they the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, those who were ready, went in with him to the wedding feast. And what happened after that? And the door was shut. I don't know why I get the vision of Noah's Ark every time I read this. Boom. Done. And later the other the other maids came uh blah, blah, blah. and later the other maids also came saying, Master, Master, open up for us. Well he answered and said, Now this has to be behind the door. <laughs> Think about it. The door is shut. And they're yelling, hey, it's shut. hey, Master, Master, open up for us. And so you hear behind this door, truly I say to you, I do not know you. Wow, couldn't, didn't even crack the door open to talk to him, no. I don't know you. Go on about your business. Bye, Felicia. Right? Didn't recognize their voice. You don't know them? And they were not what? They weren't ready. They were not prepared. See, it's about being ready. It's not about being perfect. It's about being prepared. You may not be perfectly prepared, but at least you're prepared. And the warning comes. Watch therefore. Because you do not know the day nor the hour in which the son of Adam is coming. None of us do. Stop listening to these people who say, in September 23rd, this is going to happen. How many of those things have been said the last five years? And we still here. Someone told me something in August. I was like, what? No. See? Uh, what, what month are we in? So August was two months ago. Is that right? Two, two months ago? Oh, we still here, ain't we? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, we don't know the day or the hour. We know the season. Why do we know the seasons? Because we have the fall feast to tell us. So, he gave us the season. We, oh, it's going to be in the fall. If we are accurate, we may be off a little bit. If it's fall the way we understand it. But if we are accurate, should these things should happen in the fall. When in the fall what day or what hour in the fall, what year in that fall, 
next year, the year after, 10 years from now. That's what we don't know. So guess what? My beloved, get ready. Be ready. There's an old saying, an old friend of mine used to say, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. And I took that onto my own self. I took that mantra. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Okay? I think that's a good one. So now, so in review, um, here's what we have using scriptural definitions, the understanding. We're going to go over what wise and unwise, lamp and oil and all these things. What does it mean? Okay, so here we go. I'm sorry, but I just have to say hi to little Aaron. How you doing, Aaron? So cute. <laughs> hey, good to see you, young, young follower of Yahuwah. Yeah, you. <laughs> Okay, so let's review. Number one, wise. What is wise? The wise are those who are obedient. As Nazarenes, we should already know obedient to what? We already should know that to the Torah. Two, the foolish. The foolish are those who are disobedient. Three, the lamp. The lamp is the commandments. Four, the light. The light is the Torah of Yah. Okay, so you got the commandments. Then you have the light is the Torah, which is leading the world, okay? Five, the oil. And the oil is the Ruach Kodesh, giving us what? The desire to obey the Torah of Yah. See, we don't naturally have it. So it has to be put upon us or in us to obey. The, the pressing. So how do we get this oil? The pressing, the tribulations helps the oil flow. This is why people want to get yours. Because they don't want to go through that pressing. They don't want to go through those trials and tribulations that produces that. They don't even want to get the olive, the fruit. You know, how do you get the olive? How do you get the fruit to even do that? You have to come to what? Service. You have to come to what? Scripture study. You have to study on your own. You have to pray. You have to meditate. You have Exactly. You have to listen to Heavenly Father. Right? That's what you got to do. And if you don't do that, you're not going to get that. And then, you know what's going to happen? You got to minister to family members, to co-workers, to the lady or man at the grocery store, in line, or the cashier. And you know what's going to happen? Or on Facebook, wherever. Twitter and the like. And you know what's going to happen? Persecution. And that's supposed to press that the fruit that you've acquired and that oil is now produced so that light can keep burning. See, your light's never supposed to burn out. Brother Garrett brought something very interesting in our scripture study. We are what? We're the temple. We're going through the Torah reading and we're the temple. What happened in the temple? That fire never went out. Think about it. That fire never went out. If it went out, his presence was not there. So you got these people who don't have the presence of Yah want to steal your presence, the presence of him in you. They can't. It's impossible. You can't have it. Father's not going to do it that way. Even if I wanted to give it, he's not, it's not for me to give. It's not for me to give. It doesn't belong to me. You can't give what doesn't belong to you. At least you shouldn't. Now let's go. Now let us go back to the parable of the ten virgins and see if these work. What we just learned, what they are, all the different items. Is this good to know? Okay, not worry about it. Remember to always test all things. We're supposed to do that. First Thessalonians tells us that test all things. So don't even take my word for it. I just told somebody that not too long. Don't take our word for it. Don't take my word for it. Research it yourself. You're commanded to. It is your everlasting life that's at stake. If you blindly follow anyone, that's foolishness. So test all things for yourself and see if it is correct. This is not rewriting scripture. This is not rewriting scripture. That's what some of you, oh, you're just rewriting scripture. No, we are simply using our ears to hear what this parable means by what? Using scripture to do what? Interpret scripture. I'm not using a the theology. I'm not using my own understanding. I'm going, what is scripture saying? What's the definition of scripture? And in that, then, I'm applying the understanding. 
So I'm going to read it. The 10th verse. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read it in the understanding that now, now that we have. The ten, the king, um, then the kingdom of the heavens will be like ten virgins who took their commandments and went to meet the bridegroom. Now, think about this. What are the commandments, actually? They took their vows. Remember, this is a wedding thing. So they took their commandments, their vows, and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were disobedient, and five of them were, were obedient. For when the disobedient took their commandments, they took no desire to obey. So they bring their vows and they're faking it. I'm not really going to do this. I don't have the desire to really do these vows. Imagine you, those of you who've been married, those of you who are married, those of you who want to get married. Imagine you have a mate who brings their vows and they don't, they don't, they're going to say it but not really keep to them. They have no desire to. How would you feel marrying somebody like that? Would you marry somebody like that? I don't think, I, I hope not. But the obedience took their desire to follow the Torah of Yah with their commandments. So they had the desire to follow his instructions of the vows. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a tarua, a cry. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins rose up, attended to their vows, commandments. And the disobedient said to the obedient, give us some of your desire to follow the Torah of Yah. For our vows, our commandments are, are going out. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah, I know, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. But the obedient answer is saying, since there will, be, there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. Get your own desire. See, I have a great desire to honor our Father and to do His ways. You can't tell me nothing else. There is no other life. I will never do anything else to the day He comes and takes me. And wherever I stand with Him is where I stand. You can't tell me anything. I'll die. I'll die first. But I can't give you that desire. I can't give it to you. If I could, I would. It already been done to a lot of people. So you have to get your own. You have to get your own desire. And there's plenty. Because I didn't have it either a long time ago. I, I acquired it. And, they, and while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Master, Master, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. So here we are again. Watch therefore, because you do not know the day nor the hour in which the Son of Adam coming is coming. Now discovering the distinction between the five wise obedient and the unwise disobedient virgins, Five of them now know their husband. Do you know your husband? And he knows them. Does he know you? They have a knowledge of Emmet, Hebrew for the truth, because they abide in his word. How do they know him? Mishpacha. I'm going to say this, family. You're lying to yourself. You say you know him if you're not in his word. If you're in his word sporadically every now and then, you really don't know him. You don't. You can't. I'm going to read to you what he says. Do we all agree that the scriptures are breath of Yahuwah? Right? And they're good for teaching, for reproving, for setting matters straight. For in the end, it equips every all of us for good works. Okay. So be ready for a reproof if this applies to you. So Yahuwah said to those Yahudim who believed in him, if you stay in my word, you are truly my taught ones. If you stay, he didn't say if you dabbled every now and then. He didn't say if you did it when you felt like it. If you stay. We all, you know, if you have a mate and he's staying with you, that's different than if he's coming and going as he please. He's not really with you. He's you know, there's relationships out in the world like that. Some of us may have been in relationships like that in the world where we didn't know where we stood with that person. They were coming and going. 
they, we didn't know if we were really with them or not. They never gave us a, a, a definitive answer. Found out they were on dates with other people. And so they were talking to Susie and talking to Johnny and Susie Q over here. You didn't know. Say, so we have to stay in his word. And you are truly my taught ones, and you shall know the truth. And the truth should do what to you? Shall set you free or make you free. Depending on translation. Scripture begins and ends with a marriage relationship throughout Scripture. The relationship of marriage is used to express the intimate companionship between Yahuwah and his chosen ones, his ecclesia. Yahuwah never stops pursuing his wife, even though she has broken his heart over her impetuous impetuous behavior, which is reflected in every parable, even through the prophets. So we're going to look at that word, impetuous. What does that mean? You ready? It's an adjective. Acting or done quickly and without thought or care. Synonyms, impulsive, rash, hasty, overly hasty, reckless, heedless. You can't tell them nothing. They don't listen. They won't listen. Lack of integrity. Lack of integrity, absolutely. Or they pretend to listen. And they're really not. Inside themselves, they're, I'm not doing that. Careless. Foolhardy. We know that word in Hebrew, fool means evil, wicked, bullheaded, strong, uh, headstrong. This is what fathers people have been throughout history. Some of that may either describe us today or where we used to be. You have to judge yourself and judge yourself rightly. And if any of that applies to you, Please ask him to break that because he's looking for a certain type of people because his bride, the wise virgins, are not that. Hazan describes a linchpin. A linchpin is something that holds things together for all mankind. Babylon falls for good and a chosen 144,000 are still with the name of Yahuwah for protection from the reapers, the harvesters. Now, why am I bringing up? Okay, that doesn't sound like that fit with the 12 virgins. 10 virgins, excuse me. Why it does fit? Because what we're going to understand that Father uses a lot of different uh, uh, um, descriptions of the same group of people. Each description is a different aspect. Remember, we're creating His image, so you can't explain us as a group in one way. You can't explain, explain, explain Yahuwah in only one way. You can't explain His images in only one way either. Think about it. Even let's take let's put that to the side for just a moment. You as a human being. Can I just say one word about you and describe everything about you? No. Usually I have to, everybody that I know here, everybody that I know here, even the baby, I have several words to describe them. Not just one. Right now I'm thinking so many words for Brother Garrett. But anyway, Harazan Revelation 14.1. And I looked and saw a lamb standing on Mount Zion. And with him, 144,000, having his, having his father's name, his father's name. See, we got to read this and listen. Whose father is it? It's his father. In the, in, in the Hebrew, there is no grandfathers. Greg, Greg, he said the father's father, our father Abraham. They don't say our Greg, 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 they say our father Abraham. So let's understand that. So his father's name written upon their forehead. I want you to hold on to that because later on we're going to find out what that means and why. The bride receives the name of their husband, Yahuwah, marking her as his property. There's some, there's some things here in that sentence that, that should shake a lot of people. I was like, did you do this on purpose? I'm going to but yeah. Oh, up there, okay. Well, talk to Jeanette about those things. Oh, mine's is fine. So, sorry for the blurriness, but... Uh, well, sorry. Oh, they see it fine? Yeah, okay. they see it fine. So, the bride receives the name of their husband, Yahuwah. That should bother you. Marking her as his property. I thought we were married to Yahusha. Did anybody catch that? I thought we were married to Yahusha. Huh. 
Did he not say he came in his father's name to do his father's will? He only speaks his father's word. What is he doing? What 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 is the whole purpose of Yahushua and what he's doing to do his father's work and turn everything back over to him, including us? So who are we really marrying? Right. Okay. Well, Derek, you say a lot of stuff. Bear with me. I'm gonna get into some scripture. But hopefully that shook you up a little bit. I hope it did. We're going to get some false doctrine off of you. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 23 to 28. And each in his own order. Messiah the first fruits. Then those who are of Messiah at his coming. We're giving the order now how things come in his return. Then the end. When he, Yahusha, delivers up the reign of Elohim to his father. When he, Yahusha, has brought to not nothing all the rules and all the authorities and power, every single government is going by by sorry, those who love the United States so much. Mishpachah, we got to understand this is not a government that Yahuwah wants. He's going to destroy it with the rest of them China, Russia, Australia, and the rest of them. They're getting destroyed. There's only going to be one government, there's only going to be one leader. There's no man or woman on this planet that will ever do what's needed for any of their people in full. There's only one. But let's continue. For he, Yahushua, has to reign until he, Yahuwah, has put all the enemies under his, Yahushua's feet. The last enemy to be brought to not is who? Death. For he, Yahuwah, has put all under his, Yahushua's feet. But when he, Yahuwah, says all are put under him, Yahusha, it is clear that he, Yahuwah, who put all under um, under him, Yahusha, is expected. And when all are made subject to Yahuwah, then the Son himself shall also be subject to Yahuwah, who put all under him, Yahusha, in order that Elohim be all in all. Now that's really confusing but I'm going I'm to just break it down to you real simple. How do you even want to come to Yahushua through Yahuwah? Yahuwah allures you to his son so that you, then you can get to the father. So that's how it works. So now Yahushua has some stuff he's doing. It's not all done. When he said on the tree it is finished. He, it wasn't finished. Was it? No. The part of salvation was finished. Right? Exactly. And so now, but the whole thing went thing, he got some other stuff he got to do. In the natural. So, Father's giving him the ability for his enemy to be placed under his foot. And once that happens and he reigns, now, Yahushua's going to turn everything back over to his Father. Everything. All of creation. Azam, Revelation 22, 4, and they shall see his face, whose face? Yahuwah's. And his, Yahuwah's name shall be upon their foreheads. This is what the bride is going to get to experience. I don't know the, the excuse me. Yeah, the bride's going to get to experience. The five wise maidens will get to experience. Oh, it's doing it again, Jeanette. Tell her. And Yahu, at Yahuwah's coming, the dead and the dead Nazarene, now really try to understand this, the dead Nazarenes, who are the bride, the wise five virgins, raised to meet him first. I know, it's going to be exciting. This is called the first resurrection. So when you hear about the first resurrection in scripture, <laughs> you're so excited about that. Now see, that's how we're supposed to be. Doesn't it say that we can learn from children? That's how we're supposed to be excited about it. That's the first resurrection. Then I'm going to get to that one. Then, then, then those Nazarenes who are living at the time, at that time, will join them in the air. All right, let's go to the scripture. First Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4, 
16 through 18. Because the master himself shall come down from heaven with a teruah, a shout, with the voice of a chief messenger, with, with the trumpet, the teruah of Elohim, and the dead of Messiah, Mashiach, shall rise first. Then we, the living Nazarene, who are left over during the end times, shall be caught up away with them in the clouds to meet the master in the air, and so we shall always be with the master. So then encourage one another with these words. So we should be encouraging one another with these words. You know one day, one day that's going to be us. If, if we are the five wise virgins, Bride, now I'm going to take some terminologies here. And we're going to put some things together briefly. Research this on your own. I'm not going to go too in depth. But these are all words that connect to the bride. Bride, wise managers, first fruits, first resurrections, equals wise virgins. So they're all together. They all are talking about the same group of people. We see that the wife of the lamb is referred to as a what? A bride. A remnant. 144,000. Wise managers, first fruit, a treasure possession, and five wise virgins. They are in Mashiach. The fruit, what is the fruit? The behavior Yahuwah is looking for in his wife is what? Obedience. Obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. That's what he's looking for. He's going to say, who has the behavior? Obedience to what? The Torah. What do they teach out in the circus? In the churches? They teach what? You don't have to obey that. You have freedom now. Twisting of scripture. What did, what did he say was freedom? The truth of his word. And in scripture, what is the truth of his word? The Torah. That is what they would know as Hebrew men and women. Let's go to Revelation 14, 12. It'll identify the bride's behavior. Here is the endurance of the set apart ones. Okay, the holy ones, the Kodashim. Here are those guarding the commandments of Elohim and the belief of Yahusha. So it's not one or the other. So we got some over here that say it's just all Torah. And they have no belief in Mashiach. Uh, Yahusha. Then we have others say it's all Yahusha, and we don't have to obey that old stuff. That's what's said. But you see, it's both. Everything's about marriage. About two things coming together. Not three, by the way. Two things coming together. False messengers, we know who those are, we've been warned about them, program their churches to avoid obedience. The second re resurrection occurs a thousand years later after the first one the five virgins the five obedient the bride are waiting for their husband and call on his name does anybody who's betrothed to somebody don't know know their betrothal's name the, the, the one they're engaged to i'm so i'm engaged i'm engaged oh yeah girl come back down here i'm gonna fly away what's his name uh, 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 i don't know but i'm engaged you see the ring girl you see the ring? Oh, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, what is his name? I think they call him uh, something. Well, I know his nickname. But we, uh, and they know his nickname. Or, or Little Puppet. Little Puppet. <laughs> oh, she went Chicano on us. Little Puppet. <laughs> Little Puppet. But you need to know his real name because Little Puppet ain't going to go on a, on a wedding certificate. <laughs> So let's go, to, but let, let's identify because the, the circus, the church will tell us knowing his true name does not matter. Well, I'm going to tell you, maybe that's a new shirt we should make. Knowing the name matters. It does matter. Knowing Elohim's name matters. I'm not saying that. Let's see what he says. Let's go to Yoel chapter two, uh, uh, verse 32. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be delivered. Who? Everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah. Everyone that calls on, only everyone who calls on the name. His name. 
not his title, not a false name, not a replacement name. But do we not find it interesting? As I know I do. Read the fronts of your, if you don't have a, a Nazarene type Bible, you have NIV, ERV, New King James, Old King James. If you have all these other types, read the front part, read the forwards. And they'll tell you they removed his name out of scripture. Why'd they do that? It says only those who, and that's why you have a hard time for those of you who do, and those of you who are not serene and haven't come to this revelation yet. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will take you and you will be willing to take this revelation and become free, truly free. Because it's actually a curse not having his name. It's a curse. It's not a blessing. Because I'll read again. And it shall be that everyone calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be delivered. But I know Jesus. But it doesn't say Yahusha, which means Yahuwah saves. Jesus doesn't mean that. Look it up. Look it up. It's very easy to look up. So why would you want to pronounce Yahuwah saves? Yahusha! Yahusha! Well, you know that you're proclaiming it. And those who call on that name will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be an escape for Yahuwah, uh, uh, be an escape as Yahuwah has said, I am among the survivors whom Yahuwah calls. Let's go to Acts 2.21. We'll see what Kepha says. We'll see what Kepha says. No, I do not. We don't, uh, Kepha said this on Acts 22. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Where did he get this from, Yoel? Because he was talking about Yoel earlier. He quoted Yoel, did he not? When they were talking about how they were drunk, and, and he says it's too early, but the, 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 the prophecy was being fulfilled and what was happening. So here he is again. See, this is a New Testament nothing. He's explaining Old Testament. Let's go to Romans 10, 13. For everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Who said that? Was that Brother Paul? Brother Saul? Wow, he's talking Old Testament talk. I thought that was done away with. But he's in Romans. He's talking to the Gentiles. So he's telling them, you got to call on the name of Yahuwah. See, they took that out of Scripture. I know yours says something else. It may say the name of the Lord or the name of God or whatever, but what is his name? Both of those are titles. What is his name? The Tetragrammaton, which is called in Greek the four letters, yod he uh that isn't Lord, nor is that God. But that's his name. So, so right there tells you you've got to call on his name. He says, I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and Yerush Yahu in Isaiah. <laughs> Will we be disobedient? Will we be unwise virgins? Or will we be wise virgins? Yerush Yahu, Isaiah 25, 8 through 9. He shall swallow up death forever, and the Master Yahuwah shall wipe away tears from their faces, all their faces, and take away the reproach of his people, from all the earth. You understand, Father's people are reproached against. They don't like us. They don't like true Hebrews. Either those who are uh, uh, by DNA Hebrews or those who become proselytes, they don't like us. They want to kill us. For Yahuwah has spoken, and it shall be said in that day, see, this is our Elohim. His people are said, we have waited for him, and he saves us. This is Yahuwah. We have waited for him. So they know his name. They say his name. This is Yahuwah. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his deliverance. So who is being mentioned here actually secretly? There's a, there's a secret here in the scripture. Did you catch it? Did you even catch the secret? Say, so huh? Yahusha. It's right here. It's right in here. It says, Yahuwah will, we waited for him. Let's be glad and receive his deliverance. You put those two words together, Yahusha. We're waiting for Yahusha. Yahuwah's deliverance. We're waiting for Yahusha. 
Horizon 21.4, Revelations. And, and see, see again, oh, this is, this is Tanakh speaking. They only talk Tanakh. There's nothing else to talk. And Elohim shall wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor mourning, nor crying. And there shall be no more pain for the former things that passed away. Where did Yohanan get this from? He got it from Yerushiahu. He's just reiterating again to another generation what's going to take place in the end. On that day, the five virgins, the bride of Yahusha, is going to a wedding supper. We should all be excited about that. And the rest are going to get, get go to a great wine press of wrath of Yahuwah. And it talks about blood coming out of it. All the way up to a horse's bridle. So it's gonna be it's gonna be more dead. See, we don't like to hear that part. Everybody, everybody's gonna be saved. Everybody's going to heaven. The Roman pagan way of thinking of heaven. The most evilest people in the world. Everybody, everybody says their their loved ones in heaven. I don't know how many funerals I've been. Oh, they're in heaven. No, they're not. No, they're not. What? How? No wonder nobody follows this walk. Because I can do what I want. I don't have to obey. Because everybody goes to heaven. Drug addicts all the way. You know, I think, I think about a, a popular singer who passed away. I won't say names. I don't want anybody to get upset. But you'll get it. Drug addict to the end. Was raised in the church. Sung gospel music. Went into the world. Very successful. Drug addict all the way until she died. She's in heaven. Really? So she didn't have to walk it out? See, she's famous. The whole world watched her life. She didn't have to walk it out? No. No, she had to walk it out. I'm not going to say who. You figure it out for yourself. <laughs> but she had to walk it out. We have, we're a light to the world. What's this light that we're showing? What are the five wise virgins? What are we talking about? We're supposed to have a lamp, which is the command. We're supposed to have the oil, which is the fruit of his word that gets pressed through trials and tribulations. So then the oil comes, and that's the ruach that's given us desire to obey. And by that oil, the light shines a Torah and showing everybody the way. That's the signs of a what? A wise virgin who is the wife of Yahushua. You who was delivered, showing the way to others to come. And if you're not doing that, no. No. Sorry. This is what scripture says. We can't keep making up stuff and misleading other people. The whole world misleading. Because these people are on a high platform. The whole world's being misled. Well, I can do what I want. I can murder. I can kill. I can rape. I'm okay. Say a couple of Hail Marys and I'm good. No. No. That's not how it works. So on that day, five virgins of the bride of Yahuwah is going to the wedding feast of, uh, and the rest are going to the wine press of wrath of Yahuwah. Um, as we progress in our relationship with him, Yahusha, he may, not a guarantee, he may select us to be in the first resurrection. Now I didn't say not to be fully in his kingdom. I said maybe the first resurrection. So where do you want to be? Is your decision. What are you going to at least shoot for? Are you shooting for? Everybody shooting for. As us as Nazarenes. We're shooting for New Jerusalem. To be in there. But are you really shooting for it? Now, are other things more important? Are other things distracting you? Do you have a full understanding? Is getting money. Or a mate. Or tending to your mate. Or thrills of life. Or whatever. Food, I, whatever it is, that we wear the focus on these things, then focus on His Word, right? That's not good. So He may select us to be in the first resurrection and give it a higher calling. Which one do you want? You got to make a decision, Aaron. Right? All right. So you want the higher one? Okay. Oh, 
He's so happy. He's overjoyed. I'm gonna take her calling. As the bride, the five virgins, maidens. That's the higher call. They are ready and are the first fruits. At Yahushua's return, those who are waiting for him, those who are waiting for him, and holding to his testimony, and obeying the commandments of Yahuwah, will be the first fruit. It's all of that. Together, not one or the other, they will go into the wedding supper of the Lamb. And you won't have to be at the door screaming, Hey, Master, open, open up. That won't happen. Because you'll walk right in. The second resurrection, the unwise virgins. So, is that who you want to be? Those in the second resurrection will never be the bride, but rather friends of the bride, unwise virgins. They will have missed the wedding supper by a thousand years. Some will be born during the thousand year reign. Others will be those who lived before. But, not for the higher calling. No one is in heaven except the one who descended. See, everybody's in heaven right now. That is not true. That is a pagan belief system. That is not what scripture says. Let's read what scripture says. Johannine 3, 13. And no one, and no one, and no one has gone up into the heavens except he who came down from the heavens, the son of Adam. That's, that's our own Savior's words. That's Yahushua's words. Are we going to believe our Savior? He said no one. Acts 2, 32-35. Uh, Elohim raised up his, excuse me, raised up this Yahushua, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, having been uh, exalted to the right hand of Elohim, and having received from the Father, the promise of the Son's part, Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. We're back to Kepha, we're back to that situation. The Holy Spirit has dropped the Ruach. He's explaining what's going on. For Daud did not ascend into the heavens. I want you to focus on that. This is somebody who's dead. Died for a long time now. Several thousand years. He's dead. He said he didn't ascend to the heavens. But he himself said, Yahuwah said to my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. There's a lot in that chapter, uh, the, those verses. But I want to just focus on Dawid did not ascend into heaven and he was dead for a long time. Okay, this is scripture. A Yahushua's coming, Nazarenes will rise to meet him and reign for a thousand years here on earth with him. If we are among the first fruits. So now, what position do you want to be in, Nazarene? There's two. There's two of them. You can be wise and be part of the bride class and reign with Yahushua for a thousand years. Or you can be unwise, still be in the kingdom, but you'll have a different place. You'll reside somewhere else and you won't be part of the bride class. Now, now, if not, we will be raised at the end at a thousand years. So you'll miss that whole thousand years. You'll be raised at the end. And those whose names are found in the scroll of life will receive the reward of eternal, eternal life. I, I want to say everlasting. I say that. Eternal life. Still here on earth. Not in another location called heaven. Or See, we call it heaven, but it's really New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. So we got First Timothy. Or say it to me, excuse me. 4, 3 through 4. For there shall be a time when there shall not bear sound teaching. See, this is where we get this Roman, uh, Greco Roman understanding of heaven and all this stuff from. Everybody's in heaven. For they shall be, there shall be a time when they shall not bear sound teachings. But according to their own desires. They shall heap up for themselves teachers, tickling their ears. And they shall indeed turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to miss. So what do Yahushua say? If you abide in me and you stay in my word, you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So what are they doing? 
They said, no, that's okay. I like what he's saying or she's saying. I'm going to support that. I'm going to turn away from the truth and listen to these myths. There's many people who do that. They either stay where they're at or they're with you at first, the Nazarene family. But see, what what, 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 what you should tell us, there'll be weeds, right, amongst the congregation. Now, everybody who's in the congregation is of the congregation. They can be turning away within themselves. Father knows that. And a lot of times you'll see their fruit. And you'll recognize it also and pray for them. I pray that their fruit will get better. <laughs> for your sake and for theirs, Father. So we are not going to listen to miss. Mayahu 5-5. Five, five. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I hope they heard you. At least say it again a little louder because you got such a light voice. Uh, tickling the ear pretty much reminds me of people flirting with each other. They try to get you to class for them and all that and ultimately leads to cheating, either emotional or other forms. That's something. See, the only way somebody can tickle your ear is if you let them. See, since they go to people who tickle their I, I like you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you. I, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's what they do. They cheat on Yahushua. They don't want the truth. But they're not Nazarenes. They're not in him, and he's not in them. About Yahoo 5 5. Blessed are the meek, because what? They shall inherit the earth. That not scripture, or Yahushua said that, our Savior. Tell him 37 11. Did he just get that out of nowhere? No. But the meek ones shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in plenty of peace. So you may be one of those. You're going to inherit the earth, or you'll be the bridegroom who has a double blessing, a double portion. They get to be priest kings for a thousand years. They get to reside in a place called New Jerusalem. Right? And there's a scripture in the horizon about that. Or you could be on earth. When earth is wonderful, a beautiful place. And you inherit the earth, you'll be meek. And that'll be okay. That's good. If that's what you want. 2 Timothy 4 4 tells us how myths will abound. The zodiac. Zoo, animals, constellations were thought to rule over the affairs of men. Look at how foolish that is. And in the afterlife, they will become deified and live among the Masara, the host of heaven. So, this is why we hear so much about going to heaven. So when we say those terms going to heaven, we're really reflecting this pagan idea, this pagan mythology about what going to heaven is. So we as Nazarenes should never use that terminology. Oh, I'm going to go to heaven so that we can become what? Who, who teaches stuff like that? The Mormons teach that. That they are going to die, go to, go to heaven, and they'll become their own gods. And they'll have their own earth. And heaven to them is having a bunch of women and having lots of sex and repopulating their planet. That's their mythology. The zodiac consists of 12 constellations through which the um, ecliptic passes. The name is derived from the Greek meaning animal circle, which is also related to the word zoo. See, some of the words, we don't know why we get some of these words from what they mean. We live in a pagan society. Everything we say is pagan. Everything. Now, I'm not saying don't go around, don't use the word zoo. Please don't. But understand, everything's pagan. And be careful with what you are saying. I think certain things you do say is worse than others. The worst ones, try to stay away from. Well, we're going to the place where they have animals in cages. If you want to say it that way, you could choose to do that. For those who really want to clean up the vernacular, I'm trying not to speak in pagan ways. I don't believe that's necessarily a salvation issue, but some may do that. And so for those who want to do that, they have that desire, maybe the Ruach is causing them to do that. We shouldn't say nothing to them. We should be very quiet. Because Father, because that person or persons want to express a greater intimacy and be more cleansed, even in their speech, we're to make fun of them. You're doing too much. No, no brothers and sisters, don't make that mistake. If you don't want to do it, then don't. And maybe you need to ask yourself why you don't want to. Maybe you should ask yourself that. Maybe you should pray if you should. Father, I see this. It seems weird to me. Should I be doing that? 
See, we came out of a lot of stuff, didn't we? We used to celebrate Christmas. We used to celebrate Easter. We did Halloween, most of us. And it was weird, that thought, when somebody brought that to us, or even that feeling the rule out directly gave us, we shouldn't be doing that. Well, and we went like this for a moment. Maybe you're going through that. All I'm saying is this. For those who are there and they're that, we should say, wow. We should look and say, wow, they're really doing it. And if you don't have the desire, you may want to check yourself, but don't make fun of those who do. If anything, you should reverence them, that they're willing to go that far. So I got this off of a website. Brother Garrett, may I, may I trouble you? <laughs> um, I, I didn't bring my water I usually bring, and uh, yeah, I forgot it. And so um, I got this off a website called Medical uh, Humanities, Fine Arts, Science, Biotech, uh, Bio, Bio, Ethics, thank you. Uh, etymology, Mythology, History, Literature, and Poetry. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight a couple of things. It kind of shows where Zodiac and how all these words, um, um, the etymology of them, some of them are used in science, some of them are used in all the mythology, history, and the like. So you got Zodiac. Uh, which equates to a belt circle or a dial of animals, or we would say a circle. Zone means circle, and it also connected to Zeus, which is very interesting. You got, Ky thank you, Kylos, which means circle. And so what I put together through that, a circle of retarded animals. Because we know the word church comes from that word. A circle. Creek. So the church actually means a circle of retarded animals. Interesting. That's how Satan wants to look at human beings. And he has some very fooled in believing certain things. Um, as early schism is a scientific outline um, of astrology signs. Um, they use it to denote what? Seasonal cycles. We still do that today. Looking at the stars and we know what cycles we're in. Um, as mythology, um, they use it in poetry, uh, they have heroes, um, actors, actors organized in constellations constituted by luminary stars. Is it an accident that we call actor stars? It's all connected to this. What are stars in scripture? Stars are also fallen angels. Now, in the Roman and Greek understanding, of acting, they said the best way to be possessed by a demon is to become an actor. Many actors have said they've been overtaken. Many singers have said they've been over. The arts, if you look up the word arts and what it means, it's really talking about the art of witchcraft. So the arts, painting and all that, are connected to witchcraft. That's why most artsy people, you notice, outside of those who are truly believers and disciples, they're very out there, are they not? They're different. Most of them don't follow scripture. Most of them reject it greatly with a, with a fervor. There's a small group that do, that Father uses for his own uses. The majority of not. It's connected. And then you can see all the other variations as we go down and how these words um, translate to a lot of things that we say today. But we should look up words. We should take some time, pick a word, and travel back with it and see where it came from and the origins of it. Uh, be led by the Ruach. Uh, tradition, uh, traditional, tradition that, that's not of the scriptures or tries to mix scripture with man-oriented, made traditions is what we call religion. But the knowledge of truth of Yah is reality. You gotta understand, we live in a world, you know, we, we look at, uh, uh, what do you call it? You put on those visors and you go into what? You go into a virtual reality. We don't realize we're already in a virtual reality. We're already in a virtual reality. You know, The Matrix, I hate to bring up a very demonic movie, but there's a truth I believe that's there. People won't wake up from the truth of what's, the truth of what's going on. Now, Satan tried to put his truth in there. And then make our Heavenly Father look like this evil man that's controlling things, that, that guy in the white suit that was watching stuff. So he gave his version of it. But the truth is, we are in an alternate reality right now. Satan has created this whole thing. It's not reality. And a lot of us love it. We go towards it. We're intrigued by it. We're trapped in it. That's why he's saying, get out of Babylon. 
Get out of that false reality, come into the truth of who you are, who I am, and what's really going on. And the others are going to look at you crazy. I never say, well, I don't believe you. Three, three billion people over here, trillion people over here believe what I believe. You're only one, two, five, ten, a hundred people. You guys are the weirdos. No, that's not the truth. Um, we know the truth because what? We live in Yahusha's word. Here we are again back to that. How's the only way you're going to know the truth? You have to be in his word. You have to abide in him. He is the living what? Word. Right? But what do we do? We'd rather be in the demonic stuff. The demonic man-made orientated traditions. If we stay there, we're not going to know the truth. They both can't reside in both places. We get back to the what? The fresh water and the salt water, right? If you mix them, what kind of water do you have? You have salt water. There's no more fresh water. You can't mix the two. What men say about the truth? So we're going to talk about some um, some uh, uh, worldly people or people not in covenant. Not being known doesn't stop the truth from being true. Just because you don't know it don't mean it's not true. I've had people say, but what you're saying, I've never heard of before. <laughs> no problem. Doesn't mean it's not true. That doesn't mean it's not true. That means you should check it out. You should check it out, see it, and then go from there. It's Richard Bach. Truth is so rare that it is delightful to tell it. Emily Dickinson. When you hear the truth like the raw truth, it kind of trips you out sometimes. You can't go, whoa, okay, well, they just told the truth like that. I know I do sometimes. Like, whoa, okay. And I used to laugh a lot, especially when I wasn't walking as well. Somebody would just tell the raw truth because you never get to hear it. You get to hear all this, or people just won't say it. Or uh, this, this is one of my favorite ones. People won't wait, don't wait to tell you the truth, especially if it's about them, till you tell the truth about them. <coughs> then they go, but you now. They say, all right, why'd you wait till after I said something about you, now you're going to say something about me? And especially in this walk, if we love each other, what are we doing? We're telling each other, we're telling each other, building each other up, when we may what? Have to reprove, reproach, teach. But then that's love, is that not? But then when somebody comes back and then tries to say, oh, but now you, it's like, okay, where were you in the beginning? I thought if you loved me, you would have told me that a long time ago. You wouldn't have waited till now. Then we have uh, another person says, the larger the crowd, the more probable that that which is praised is folly. What do we know the folly to be? Evil, wicked, by scripture definition. And the more improbable that it is truth. So the more the more that people believe things, most likely it's not true, this person is saying. And the most improbable of all, that it is any internal truth. And that's Soren, kick guard, and that comes from the purity of heart. So just because a lot of people believe in it doesn't mean it's true. Most likely, it's going to be more likely that's not true. Chosen ones have the living words. The chosen ones possess the fullness of oil, the Ruach Kodesh, who gives us the desire to obey what? His word. That the knowledge of Emmet, true, the thing Stephen told the Sanhedrin the fathers had cast away. Remember, you understand the time frame. Why was Yahushua here? For a lot of things. But I'm going to focus on this aspect. They started teaching Judaism. That is not a scripture. That is Talmudic. With a little bit of Torah there. Okay? He was trying to get their straight. They had forsaken him. He had, they had forsaken the truth in the way. So he was coming to make it right. So go to Acts 7, 9, Titus 11, 1, and Abraham Hebrews 10, 26. You can read that on your own uh, for the sake of time. What is the extra oil? A knowledge of truth. The missing oil is obvious. Remember, you'll know them by their fruits. Let's go to Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. But know this. Then the last days, hard times shall come, for men shall be lovers of self, lovers of silver, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, thankless, wrongdoers, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, fierce, 
having hate uh, haters of good, betrayers, reckless, puffed up, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of Elohim, having a form of reverence but denying its power. How many people you know walk around saying, I believe, I believe, and they go on their own way. They do their own thing in the way they want to do it. And turn away from these. That's the warning to us next. We turn away from these. For among them are those who creep into households and captivate silly women, load, loaded down with sins and, load, and led away by various lusts. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Have you not seen people like that? Always learning. I knew somebody who was going who said they were going to a church uh, uh, seven days out of six days within a week. They would write this and do that and do this and the other. But you know what they were doing? They were denying. They were having a form of reverence but denying this power. They were living a double life. Thinking that that would work. That scripture doesn't say that. But they were going to do, she was going to do her own thing in her own way. And it never worked. I don't care how many mission trips you go on. I don't care if you pray 24 hours a day. But if you're doing evil right beside it, smoking a cigarette every time you say a word, after you say a word, taking drugs, taking a line, and then continue to pray. Having sex outside of a marriage and no commitment. You can do all these things all you want. What does the scripture say? This is the endurance of the saints. Those who keep the commandments, that's obedience, and have the testimony of Yahushua, the Mashiach. It's both. The knowledge of the truth is what? The extra oil. The indwelling of Yahushua's spirit gives us the desire to obey, transforming our minds to the minds of Messiah. And that what scripture says, Romans says that, 12, 2, that we're supposed to be renewing our minds. I think before that I said, don't, don't, don't fall in the ways of the world, I'm paraphrasing. We're to let that go. Ephesians, and you get Ephesians uh, 22, 24, and Colossians 3, 10. In case you missed it. In case you missed it, let's keep moving. Let's let, let's break this down a little bit more simply. Said a lot of stuff. Let's home it in. A Nazarene, the five virgin bride identified. Now, there's two Nazarene groups. We're talking about the first five, who actually are the bride. Those chosen of the first, those chosen for the first resurrection are in Mashiach. Restricted to the followers, disciples of Yahushua the Nazarenes who are the bride class. Um, please read Acts 5, 32, 24, 5, 1 Thessalonians 4, 6. Some are dead and some are living at the time of his return. Not all Nazarenes will be in the higher calling, but certainly all will be Nazarene. So we got to remember that just because some of a higher calling, you know, the, 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 the Luites, the priests, were of a higher calling than, than the majority of what? Yazrael. Were they all Yazrael? Yes. Yes. The farmer was just as much Yazrael as the Luai who was doing the sacrifices. Different responsibilities, different requirements, and also different blessings come along with that. It just does. It's how it works. They know the truth. Yahusha, their husband, and live in his word. Back to Johanan 8, 32. Let's identify the oil. This is true. The five wise, obedient virgins are the first fruits, the bride of Yahusha. They are what? Of the higher calling. Being in the first resurrection of the dead in Messiah and the take up and the taking up of the living Nazarene at Yahusha's coming to what? To the wedding feast. The five unwise, disobedient, enter into their reward a thousand years later. At the second resurrection, wise manager stewards who teach, feed, his assembly, the household, are those who are identified as watching, waiting at the door, and are ready for the return of their master. 
the, the, this preparation shows they are of a higher calling. Are you prepared? Are you ready? If he came today, would you say I would be in? Could you say that in confidence? If not, then get cooking. Get going. If you desire to be the bride. If not, I know at least one person who personally told me they know they're supposed to be on earth and helping. And I was shocked. Whoa, okay. Okay. They knew that. So I'm 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 going to make an assumption, it's an assumption, that there's many Nat Supremes who don't feel that higher calling. They don't feel that. They don't know. And that's okay. We who have the higher calling should not look down on those who don't. We're more of a servant. The higher calling, we're doing more of a service. The more glory, if you will, the more responsibility, the more uh, uh, leadership position you have, you're more of a servant. You're more of a servant. Not less. So, keep that in mind and stay humble. This preparation shows they are of the higher calling, Yahusha's uh, possession. This is fully explained in Lucas 12. We'll go there. So do that on your own. Now, what I love, and I hope you can really see this. I love this room because I think this is, in the, for the most part, scripturally accurate. Especially if you've been listening to what was just being taught. You have the bride. You have the priest king, Yahusha. You have father. And what is he doing? He's taking her to him. He's taking her to him. Now, think about it. If Yazrael is the wife of who? Yahusha, Yahua. And we're part of Yazrael. I mean, who are we really? Who are we really being married to? In Revelation, it says we're being turned over to the Father. His father. We're his. In the end, and those who are the five wise will get to see his face. What a, if you really want to see his face, I would implore you to desire, if you don't have that desire, ask for it, to be the five wise virgins. Yes, you may still be a Nazarene. But those who get to see Heavenly Father's face is only for a limited amount of people. And it actually really makes sense if you think about it. Think about CEOs of companies and people who are really high up. You don't really get to see them. You get to see their assistants. You get to see, you know, their company, whoever's, as you go down lower, you get to see those people. But very rarely you get to see them. Definitely not meet them just because you want to. And when for TV and stuff, will we really know what the president looked like and, and go up and meet him? We get to know him very intimately because of TV and the media. Take all that away. You wouldn't be able just to walk up to him. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you'll send us some questions or concerns or, or, or even some more revelation enlightenment. If there's anything in here you think is inaccurate, please, we'd love to discuss and talk to you about that. Um, as I said in the beginning, and those of you who may have joined us later, uh, we're now going to enter into our praise and thanksgiving because... Our Heavenly Father just gave us an amazing meal. It was delicious and scrumptious, and now we're going to thank him for it. Um, you know, it's like thanking the chef for an amazing meal. Imagine if we did this as humans to other humans. <coughs> After we had a good meal, we, 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 we sung to him. That would be really interesting. But this is what we're going to do for Father. So please join us in giving him praise and thanksgiving.
נעמוד ביחד. נשיר את השיר הזה, אם תעמדו בדברים.
circle that we was Everything that we've been through Sold away and now we're made new Yahusha's risen, we all redeemed Lift your voice and sing with me Nothing compares to yours, love, yeah
Do we really understand that we have freedom? We sing the songs, as Derek always says, we sing these songs, but do we really understand what we're seeing? Now, when it comes to freedom, we think that we have freedom because of the way United States has given the idea of what freedom is. Um, for those who don't understand, actually, well, through really third world countries, United States is a major proponent in what many things are today because we have such a big influence. Unfortunately, my desire it wasn't that way. But when it comes to freedom, do we actually understand that we have freedom? Now, it's not freedom apart from the law. The Torah is freedom. Psalms 119.45 says that. Now, when it comes to freedom itself, I can speak for myself, and I'm pretty sure that Derek can and Jeanette and those in the congregation can speak for themselves when it comes to saying that when it comes to freedom, we've never felt more free obeying and doing what it says than when we weren't obeying and doing what we what it says. Now, it, the concept doesn't really work. It doesn't really sound like it fits. I remember when I was in Christianity, I was like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. And what's rather interesting, now that I'm sitting there and saying, I can't do this, I can't do that, because I know what Father says, it's so much more freeing. Because I don't sit there and I don't have to sit, I don't have to question, is that right? Is it, can, can I do that? You're, you're always living on this edge. Father says, do this, don't do that. Plain and simple, no interpretation needed. That's where freedom comes in. You don't have to sit there and worry, am I doing something right? You don't have to worry about your salvation. Granted, nobody knows until the end. I mean, even Paul says, uh, he doesn't he he runs this race enduring to the end in hopes i think he says it in philippians colossians i can get back to you on that one but when it comes to freedom there is more freedom in doing what yah says obeying the commands eating right obeying the festivals having sabbath keeping sabbath there's more freedom in obedience than there is in traditions because you're constantly questioning, am I doing something right? Am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? Am I allowed to do this? Am I not allowed to do that? It's very simple. So your freedom is here, but if you try to do things in your own life, I was looking up quotes from the from one of the guys that that Derek was using, uh, Soren Kierkegaard, Kieker, 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 some Swiss, some Swiss philosopher. And one of the quotes that he was saying, um, that Derek didn't use that he's actually said was, um, a man who is proud will do what he can, which is right. And that's, that's, that's a great thing. But when a man tries to do something his way, he's not fighting against himself or other men. He's fighting against Yahuwah. And he said, God, no, so I'm, I'm changing it to the, rough, to the proper use. If you're trying to do things yourself, <laughs> you're not fighting against man. You're not fighting against society. You're not fighting against culture. You're fighting against Yahuwah because Yahuwah has a set ordination, a set way, a set path on how everything is supposed to go. If you try to do things your way, you're going against him. Think about that. How many people sit there and actually do stuff their own way? That's not freedom. It's not freedom. The United States is a freedom country. It's a, it's a country that is built on freedom. This flag means from free. Why is there such resistance? Why is there such turmoil? It's the same thing with Father. You have people rising against laws you have people rising against government it's the same way that father the way that we see the united states today it's the same exact way that father sees you 
if you say you do not have to do what he says, if you sit there and say that his Torah is dead, if you sit there and say anything contrary to what he says, you see Antifa, the leftists, whatever, kicking down guards, kicking down police officers. Well, you're kicking Yahuwah down. It's exactly what it is. There's freedom when it comes to obedience. And there's so many people that can come out and say and, and, and prove that true. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Everybody knows that song. But yet when they sing that song... I think it's from Bethel or whatever. They sing that song. I'm no longer a slave to sit fear. Say it fear of sin. It's all the same. I'm using sin. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of Yah. But yet, they sit there. And as they sing it, they're still a slave to their sin. To their fear. To their anxiety. To whatever it may be. Choose freedom over slavery. Choose freedom over disobedience. Choose freedom and obey. It's that simple. So, we can pray. Avina Makenu, our Father, King, Father, we praise you, we glorify you. We thank you so much for this time. We thank you for the word that you have given Derek to give us. <clears throat> knowing more about the 10 versions and father let us put ourselves in the position of the 10 versions may we see what half we see are we actually are in are we in the ones that were prepared with the oil or are we the ones that were lacking that weren't prepared and that when you came when you come are we going to be ready are we going to be sitting there knowing that you're there and we're going to walk into the pearly gate through the pearly gates what does everybody wants to say we, we walk in through the gates with you. Or are we sitting there banging on the gates? Let us in, let us in. I know your word says for those who are lawless, you don't know them. And it says that people will rise up and say, oh, we did this, we did this. And you say, I don't know you. I'm going to spit you out. That's what you say. I'm going to blot you out. You, you don't exist to me. Father, let us not be that type of people that blot ourselves out. Father, I thank you for this Shabbat. Thank you for this day of rest. And I ask you that you continue this day of rest um, until wherever, whenever you desire. Those who go back to work tomorrow, those who go back to work on Monday, whatever it may be. I ask for a Shavuot to have a good week to come. May we see the trials that we go through and stop looking at the cup half full, or half empty, I mean. And look at it half full and say, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. You're putting me through the press. You're anointing me because that's how olive oil comes about. That's how grapeseed oil comes about. That's how oil comes about. We need to go through the press and let us see the lessons and, and learn from everything that we go, end up going through. And just what it is that you have us um, face every, each and every day. And as we go through those things, may we remember you at the forefront of our minds, not forget about you and not uh, think that we can do anything on our own. Because ultimately, we don't want to fight against you. I ask that you place that desire in us that we seek you before we seek anything else or anybody else. And if we desire to seek for answers anywhere, we go to our brothers and sisters. So, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for being here with us. I thank you for just everything you've done in, in my life and in, in my brothers and my sisters' lives and everything that you're doing in this congregation and around the world. It's just so amazing to see. So, Father, we thank you. We love you. We praise you and we glorify you. In Yahushua's name, we pray. Hallelujah. So, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Until next Shabbat, Shalom.